This is 7 News, the voice of the coast. Tonight, a crime scene created after a teenager is shot at in Coffs Harbour. Kempsey councillors vote to apply for a rate rise, leaving residents disgusted. I'm Daniel Gibson. Later on this news hour, a man charged with sexually assaulting a 90-year-old woman. And there's rumours Gladys Berejiklian could become the new Optus boss. 7 News begins now. Good evening. Two men have opened fire from a moving vehicle in a beachside suburb in Coffs Harbour. Witnesses claim they were pursuing a 20-year-old local male who fled the scene, hiding in nearby bushland. The sound of gunshots stopped Park Beach residents in their tracks late yesterday. A young man walking along Prince Street at around 4pm confronted by armed men in a silver Holden Commodore. It is alleged that one of the males has produced a uh, shortened firearm and demanded the male's shoes. The 20-year-old fled the scene with the car in hot pursuit. Quite fast, like they were doing burnouts the whole way chasing him. The victim escaping injured into nearby bushland. And as a result of this, he sustained some injuries to his knee as in jumping a fence nearby uh, where neighbours and passers-by have notified police. And he looked terrified, absolutely terrified. Senior Coffs Harbour Police and Forensics arrived quickly, combing the grass in search of casings, setting up a crime scene and removing a fence panel with a bullet hole. And as a result of canvassing and a number of inquiries, we were able to lead to a house uh, in the adjacent area, which was subject to a crime scene warrant. Police recovered firearm parts, ammunition and a getaway vehicle at the home, arresting a 17-year-old and 29-year-old male and charging them with multiple firearm offences. Both were refused bail in Coffs Harbour Court today. It is believed that the uh, three parties involved were all known to each other. The incident part of a disturbing rise in gun crime. It is something that we have seen over the past months, a number of homemade and replica firearms being used in producing crime. In a disturbing coincidence, there has been another robbery involving a gun in a street by the same name, but in Grafton. Liz Penny is in Coffs Harbour for us now with more on this. And Liz, what happened? That's right. Strangely enough, there was another home invasion at a house in another Prince Street at around the same time. This time, police claim it was a man of Aboriginal appearance. He was in his 50s. Two occupants of a house were confronted by a male who made demands uh, for money um, and other items inside the house and produced what police believe has been a shortened firearm or a pistol uh, and demanded cash from the male occupant. At this stage, no arrest has been made and anyone with information is being urged to contact Crime Stoppers. Thanks for the update, Liz. That's Liz Penny reporting there for us tonight. Well, after an illustrious career in Sydney, former Detective Sergeant Damien Loon retired to a quiet life on the North Coast. But ongoing cold cases still follow him. Days spent relaxing, surfing and reading crime novels. It's a different pace from life as a plainclothes officer in Sydney, where former Detective Sergeant Damien Loon spent much of his 35-year career. Uh, some days I had you know, terribly long days and long nights and... Um, now to sit back and think, oh, it's not going to happen anymore, it's pretty good. But since his retirement two years ago and subsequent move to Ballina, Damien hasn't entirely left his career behind. While he no longer has input into investigations, he's still connected to the families of the cases he's worked on. My enjoyable part of my service was to help people and that's always stayed with me and, it, and I'll never lose that. His high-profile cases include the disappearance and murder of Lynette Dawson, which resulted in the conviction of her ex-husband last year, and that of three-year-old Cheryl Grimmer, who vanished from a Wollongong beach in 1970. That investigation led to a man being charged in 2016, but the case was dismissed. We thought we got, you know, we had it there, and unfortunately with um, the results of a court, it didn't proceed. This week, a new potential eyewitness has come forward. His story is very credible. Uh, he says that he sees a, uh, a teenager between the age of 15 and 17 take a child from the beach. Now, that was our result from day one of our investigation. Hopes that the new evidence may be groundbreaking enough to lead to some closure for the family. Certainly, if it's new information, then there should be a push for a fresh inquest into Cheryl's disappearance. As for the former cop, he still keeps his ear to the ground on unsolved crimes. 
they say once the next cop, you're always the next cop, and that's probably true. But uh, I still love, I love what I did, and um, it'll never be, it'll never leave me either. So. Claire Morton, Seven News. Home, business and property owners in Kempsey are one step closer to a rate rise following a council vote today. Councillors have debated applying to IPART for a 42.7% increase to help manage predicted debt. Samantha Crow joins us live now and Sam was at the uh, council meeting today. Sam, what was the outcome? Well, Maddie, councillors voted in favour of applying for a rate rise with just one councillor, Alexandra Wyatt, voting against. It follows a huge community campaign to stop the application and today many residents are feeling let down by the result. A decision to apply for a 42.7% rate rise over the next three years and a community outraged. Absolutely disgusted. Horrified, us community have had a guffaw, and finally, this is the first time in my life that we've stood up. We can't afford it. At the end of the day, we can't afford it. And it will put a lot of people into stress, um, into trauma. The public forum and council meeting was moved to Kempsey Cinema to accommodate the huge crowd. More than 100 submissions were received, the majority of them against the motion. 9,000 signatures were presented by petition and last night 12 people spoke out against the proposed rise, raising concerns about residents. It is our duty as residents of this LGA to challenge this un-Australian and demoralising proposal. This is our financial future in your hands as well as farmers and businesses who say they're already finding it tough to make ends meet. We cannot withstand further financial burdens imposed by this council on our already struggling businesses. If approved by IPART and then introduced by council, the rise will mean a 7.9% rate rise for the first year, the remaining 34.8% in the two years after that. Council insisting it's necessary just to continue the services already being delivered. We're going to be ending up on present numbers, $79 million in debt in 10 years' time. So we've got to turn that around. Eight councillors voted in favour of making the application. Just one, Alexandra Wyatt, voted against. Cost of living crisis is huge and just to, to deal with them in isolation, I can't do that. I can't send these people to the bank in tears. And the community says their fight is not over yet. Moving forward, no. This little group, the Figure It Out Kempsey Shire Council group, we're going to ramp it up. Samantha Crow, 7 News. Lismore City Council will this evening decide whether to support a planning proposal to rezone a flood-free site at Goonabalabar. The roughly 75 hectare block is currently mapped as state significant farmland. The proposal would see that change to facilitate a mixed-use development for residential, industrial and commercial use. If approved, the development is expected to provide opportunities for the affordable relocation of homes from high-risk flood areas. Senior physicians have raised the alarm over unwanted delays at the new Grafton Hospital. Clarence Valley Council have voted for new height restrictions on buildings, pushing back the start of works. Everyone agrees it's time for a new era in healthcare on the Clarence Valley. Oh, it's very important. We, we really would need that. And uh, there's also plans for the private hospital as well. The outdated hospital unable to keep pace with population growth. The demand of the community and the ageing of the population demographic is such that the demand every day is it's made work difficult for us. But Clarence Valley Council has been taking a close look at water levels, changing the rules around construction to try and flood proof the city. To prepare buildings for the future, we we're going to have to increase the heights of, um, of the floor levels. New South Wales Health putting a pause on the planned construction of the Grafton Hospital once due to start in 2025. Investigating concerns rising flood waters could isolate the hospital. Although it's never actually flooded at this site, this site has certainly been surrounded by flood water. Increasing the height of the city's levee wall is not considered to be an option. The potential 
flood risks are so high, we would have to really build the levee hall an awful lot higher. These changes could have huge implications for development right across this city. For instance, Grafton Shopping World would have never gone ahead in its current state under these new rules. Meanwhile, the ageing hospital continues to struggle to retain and attract new health workers, surgery waiting lists blowing out as staff pursue better offers in more equipped locations. Today, at this moment, there are nine patients in the emergency department who yet to have a bed in the hospital. Liz Penny, 7 News. A serious cattle virus transmitted by insects has been detected on the far north coast. Local land services say the detection of bovine ephemeral fever, also known as three-day sickness, has appeared earlier in the season than usual. It is expected to move south in coming weeks. Cattle owners are encouraged to vaccinate stock from outside the affected region and young homebred animals before the virus spreads. Driver safety awareness was a focus at Great Lakes College today as students learned about the impact of their decisions when behind the wheel. They heard stories from families who have been impacted by road trauma and learned about the role of a first responder. Witnessing the shocking consequences of getting behind the wheel. Today, school students attended presentations and workshops learning about the effects of road trauma. The effect of just 10 k's over can change not only their life, but their families, their friends, the community. Hannah's Blue Butterfly Foundation aims to promote driver safety. It was established by the McMurtry family following the death of their daughter in 2013. Telling their story today, they hope it will help to save a life. When you see it on the television and turn the television off, that's not the end of the journey for these families. Too many lives are lost on our road, too many people are injured, too many families are impacted. Emergency services were also involved, demonstrating their role as first responders at the scene of a crash. The kids don't often see the, um, the outcomes of motor vehicle accidents and if they can see what we have to do to extricate people from a, a smashed vehicle, it gives them a little bit more, it's a graphic um, vision, but at least it gives them a uh, something that they can take away and, and learn from. While it was a confronting day for the kids, the lessons they took away were invaluable. Watch like my speed when I'm driving and drive sensibly and if I'm in the car with someone who's not doing the right thing, tell them to slow down because it's not them who's going to get affected, it's their family as well. It's just very eye-opening to like realise what can actually happen and how like bad things can go. It's definitely made me think to be a lot more careful and even if I'm doing the right thing, someone else might not be, so to like look out a lot more. Hannah Hartup, 7 News. Well, Danny joins us now for a look at today's weather. And, Danny, we saw some cloud cover up and down the coastline and some scattered showers for some too. We did, guys. It was pretty gloomy today. Hi, everyone. I hope you're well. We saw some of those isolated showers a little inland. Pretty cloudy for our coastal towns too. Temperatures around the mid-20s, 26 degrees in port. Tari got to a top of 27. Kempsey, 27 as well. As we head further north, Co uh, Coffs Harbour saw a top of 26 degrees. Yamba getting to 25. And Byron, you saw a top of 23. We had a light breeze from the north winds speeds remaining pretty low due to a slow moving trough in our northeast there's still a chance of a thunderstorm later this evening and more barreling towards us later this week i'll tell you when to brace for those a little later guys yeah plenty of roundabout thanks danny we'll see you soon still to come in seven news a new service opens to provide mental health support for parents and teenagers learn the importance of building healthy relationships with the elderly and a little later on this news hour, a man charged over the alleged sexual assault of an elderly woman inside a retirement home. There's rumours Gladys Berejiklian's about to become the next CEO of Optus. And Beijing warns Australia to stop making irresponsible accusations after our Navy divers were injured by sonar. A new pilot program has been introduced connecting students with seniors on the mid-north coast. The initiative has been designed to inspire both generations as they learn a little more about each other. Bringing students and seniors together. Well, I want string. Oh. String? String to hang it up with. For six weeks, students from Heritage Christian School and residents from RSL Life Care have come together as part of a pilot program to combat loneliness and increase connectivity. Each student paired with a senior for the experience. 
they're really interesting. They have lots of stories, and yeah, they're they're nice to hang out with. I've really loved to um, learn some new skills from some of the seniors. We just talk about like life in general, and you know, I love listening about her like past and all of the stuff that she's been through. From scavenger hunts to knowledge sessions and Christmas crafts, the aged care residents have looked forward to the weekly sessions. It's just been great fun and it's a great learning experience and I've got met some great friends. They're quite impressed with us and we're impressed with them, so that's been really good. I've learned such a lot from them and I've enjoyed their company immensely. The team are now hoping to expand the initiative and have seen a change in participants both young and old. Change in the residence has been phenomenal, I feel, like even just having something to do and look forward to. Um, I think we take that for granted. Our students engaging with the seniors has been a really wonderful opportunity for them to see that they're part of a wider community. Plus, some lifelong connections have been made as well. It just happened organically and it's been so beautiful. Samantha Crow, 7 News. New and expected, I should say, parents in Lismore can now have face-to-face -face mental health support through a new specialist service. Gidget House offers one-on-one -on -one care and group support for those embarking on and adjusting to parenthood. It's operated by not-for-profit Gidget Foundation Australia. The service is Medicare funded and free for patients. It's estimated that one in five mothers and one in ten fathers are affected by perinatal depression and anxiety. We encourage you, if you're struggling, to reach out so that we can put you in touch with a, a practitioner who can help you uh, navigate that journey. To access the free service, patients need a GP referral and a mental health treatment plan. Still to come in 7 News, a Dragon Boat Club claims their best ever results. And over 75 national hockey duties awaits a Manning Vale player. Welcome back. At 75 years old, Ron Pulling is defying all expectations of age. He's just been selected in the Australian over 75 master hockey team set to compete in South Africa next year. 75 and still tearing up the hockey field. Ron Pulling has just returned from the Masters Hockey National Championships in Perth, playing for the New South Wales team at the 10-day tournament. Ron has now been selected to represent his country. From the national championships in, in Perth, they picked um, an, a, um, a national side, an Australian side, uh, in each great age group, all the way through to 75s. And those teams will participate in the World Cup, which is being held in, in Cape Town, South Africa, next year. Despite his age, Ron is still out and training hard. At our age, it's hard work keeping at the top, right? So uh, I train probably five days a week. Playing the sport his entire life, hockey is in his blood, with no signs of slowing down anytime soon. Well, the first time I picked up a hockey stick, I was nine. So that takes me back a, a, a fair way. Masters hockey runs from the ages of 35 to 80 plus. For Ron, staying fit and active has never been so important. I had a period, I've got mental knees, right? And um, I had a period there where I could hardly walk, let alone uh, play hockey. Making lifelong friends and doing what he loves. Ron is showing that success has no bounds. Everything you read says, you know, exercise is so key to heart condition and all that sort of thing. Um, hockey is a great outlet for older people, women and men. Hannah Hartup, 7 News. Manning River Dragon Boat Club have completed their most successful carnival to date, cleaning up at the Pearl Dragons Regatta in Foster over the weekend. The team came away with the win in the 2K turn race, 28 seconds ahead of second place. They also came first in the women's tens race and received multiple silver medals as well. They were absolutely beside themselves. They're so keen. We're already training for our next regatta, which is at Kempsey. And um, we had some brand new people, so I think I think what that does is it makes the new people really enjoy what we do. The team have been working hard for these results, excited to continue putting in the work for future regattas. Up next in 7 News, Danny is back and she's got your local weather forecast. That's next.
Hello again, time for another check of the weather. Troughs over the east are set to trigger more showers and storms, making heavy falls likely in southern Queensland and eastern New South Wales. A high will keep the remainder of the state mostly dry for the next day or so, but by the end of the week, we should see some storms along the central ranges tracking further northeast into the weekend. Taking a look at rainfall now, and as we just saw, the region is expecting what would be a very welcome relief to drought conditions. It'll be in pretty short bursts, Port Macquarie and the northern rivers to see no more than five millimetres on the gauge tomorrow. Those showers will combine with some fairly moderate temperatures, getting to a top of 26 degrees in Kempsey, 25 in Port Macquarie and 25 over in Yamba. Our waters are looking pretty calm. Seas of around two metres, an extra metre and a half for swell and winds tracking north to northwest. And as we go into our wet Thursday weather now, top of 22 degrees for Nambucca Heads, 24 degrees for Tyree, a chance of showers as well as we reach into those low 20s. Over for Friday though, wrapping up our working week, we're looking at a top of 23 degrees in Kempsey, 22 in Port Macquarie. Tyree, you're getting to a top of 23. Casino, looking at a top of 25. More spotted showers across that last day of our working week. Tweed, you're looking at a top of 26 degrees. As we look into the next seven days though, there is some sun out. Our UV rating is set to spike. At that stage, we should see similar conditions over the weekend as well before returning to 30 degrees on Monday, guys. So a bit of a mixed bunch across the next week. Definitely not a good time to put the washing outside. A lot of showers in the week ahead. Yeah, that's it. But still need to slip, slop, slap at that Absolutely. UV. Thanks, Danny. And that's all we have time for tonight. Thanks for watching. You can catch up on our website or, of course, at 7+. Plus. Right now, Dan's got your national news. Enjoy your night. We'll see you tomorrow at 6 o'clock.